Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with a promised video. Okay, um, last, oh gosh, when was it? I want to say it might have been March, might have been April, can't remember. Link will be in the description box below. I showed you how I take postage stamps that are not, well, things that maybe are damaged or they're not really my taste in postage stamps or I've got numerous of them or they just they just don't do it for me okay I take these sort of postage stamps um, these are only in this envelope because when I sort my stamps my postal stamps I always put the unwanted ones in here and then what I do is I work on them and then they become these now in the previous video I showed you how I did this I gave you options, um, so that video will be in the description box for you to see. But as you can see, I've turned unwanted stamps into stamps that are going to be great for ephemera. I mean, don't try and mail anything with them, but you can certainly use them in your ephemera. So I did say in this vid that video that I would show you how, um, other ways to do um, postage stamps. And the postage stamps we're going to make are these ones. Now, they're a little less realistic. However, they're equally as good for ephemera. I mean, as you can see, they're pretty, they're nice, they're lovely. And we're going to work on, I'm going to show you how I do these. I'm going to show you one more option, which is what I don't do very often. But I'll talk about these as we go along, because we'll, we'll look at these for a reference point. Um, let's move those to one side. Right. Let's start off with the option I no longer use, or very rarely use. You can get Fisker's Postal Edge Scissors. Okay, let's find a bit of paper, and I'll show you a demonstration of the cut or the edge that they give. Let's find something dark, because I know that you're going to need to see that on that. So, they give you this sort of edge. Now, I personally like that edge better than the edge that I get with the die, which is what I'm going to show you. However, the problem is, let's just move that out of the way. I've had this pair of scissors um, several years, should we say. And when I was first hunting for this scissors, and we're talking a few years ago, I couldn't find it for love and money. In the end, after months of searching, I did find someone on eBay who was selling off supplies and I went into an auction and ended up having to buy an entire set of Fiskars edge scissors just to get this one, which is why I don't use it that often and why I don't use it in um, videos because it's very hard to get hold of. For me, anyway, it was hard to get hold of. So what I use instead is I use dies. Now, I have two of these. That's not my fault, that's the maker's fault, because I ordered one and they sent me two. So I was fine about that. And then this was another one. I've left them on my magnetic plate, just so you see them. So when you see it, it looks like this. Now, I don't tend to use the middle bit, which is the ticket bit. I just use these pieces, because I can make tickets easy. It's only a strip of paper. Um, I checked this morning, and what is it today? We're still in April at the moment of filming this. Um, I checked eBay and Amazon this morning. If you put in postal, star, uh, postal stamp craft die or even postal stamp die, these will come up. There are other versions, but these are the most prolific ones I found. And these are the shapes I want anyway. I do do the odd square one, but usually it's a rectangular ones. Um, what I would say, though, is be aware, I have never found them come from anywhere other than China. So normally I don't buy supplies from China because a lot of the time they're rip-off products, but I could never find the, the original makers of these. So basically I went ahead and bought them there. So we're going to talk about how I use them, what I do with them. But first of all, I want to tick a few boxes. OK, I always do my stamps on either a white or a cream background. Now, where do I get that from? This or these are the inside pages from an old book. 
So if I've got an old book that I'm gutting for some reason, I take the pages and these will come, become stamps. You can use just regular coffee paper, copy paper, sorry, not coffee, copy paper, because stamps are thin. They're not thick. I mean, if I look at a real stamp, this, oh, it's all got the sticky tag on it. Um, they're not, they're not thick. You can see through them. So copier paper is perfect for doing for those. Um, but even though I only do my stamps in this colour or white, just know that there are postage stamps out there. Like these are from the Netherlands and they've got the colour all the way to the edge. These are gold on the background. So know that if you choose to do um, a stamp other than a cream or white, there's nothing wrong with it. As long as it's got that edge and an image and it's been franked, the viewer's eye will tell you that it's it's a stamp. Right, let's bring in um, my big shot. So I've got a big shot. It's this. It's a die cutting machine and an embossing machine. Um, I have had this, oh good God, I, it's got to be about 15 years, I would say. I, I can't remember. It's a lot of years. I bought it when it first came out. If I only have one regret, there is a Big Shot Pro, which is probably about that much bigger, which I kind of wish I'd have bought, but at the time it was way beyond budget. And now I've used this so much, I don't really need a big one anyway. Um, they do come up on... Um, eBay auctions occasionally so if you're on a budget keep your eye out for big shot out there and there are other options now there are electronic options if you don't want to hand crank it there are lots of other options um this under here let's undo this um this is a magnetic shim uh a, it doesn't normally come with a big shot there's normally just a regular shim underneath that um underneath that so so anyway that's what I'm using today. So my method is going to be, let's pull that back out again. Right, this is my base plate. It's all scarred because that's what the metal cuts down into. I'm gonna to need to take a piece of this. So, let's see. It needs to be as wide. Yeah, it's probably more economical to do it that way. Let's just tear the edge off here. And then I'm going to take the larger one and pop it on here. And then I usually take the smaller one or smaller ones and line them up behind it because that way I can get one really good cut and I make as many as I can. Now, if I place them to one side, I will probably be able to do another cut there. It's OK for them to touch each other, but not to overlap. Okay, let's just put that. They're probably going to jump around because there's a magnet underneath. Oh, no, it stayed where it was. That's good for once. Pop it under there. Now, I just have to wind this through. Now, I have found with some of the dies that come from China, I tend to wind them through and then I gently wind them back again just to make sure they are fully cut. But sometimes they don't fully cut. Then let's just take this off here, that off there. When it's all in place, can I get another one on there? Yeah, I'm just going to pop that one on there. Sorry, you're out of shot. I'm just putting that one on there just to run this through again, just so I can make the most out of this. Right. Then this piece of surplus paper here will go into my box of um, book edges and that will get stamped with numbers or words in the future. So let's just take this off here. Got all the bits out. This is the bit about die cutting that can be a bit of a pain in the producey. Right, I'm going to move that just to one side so I don't have to clean it with you on screen. But that's, a, that's what we have to do. So looking at these now, so I've got these now, these ones, which is this and this one, the way they're manufactured, they almost cut in the middle so you can just pull them apart and they become stamps. Again, see, it's almost cut through, pull them apart and you've got your stamps. However, these ones, 
These are the ones that, let's get a brush or something to poke those out with. Um, these are the ones that I said from, from China, but as I said, I've not seen them anywhere else. So please forgive me if someone is the designer of these and I just don't know it. Um, these ones, sometimes they don't overly cut all the way through unless you go through twice. It also depends on the thickness of your paper, um, which is the downside of these. Now, these do not have the mark for it to be torn by. And I have found through experience, goodness knows I've gone through experience on this one, that if you just tear them, sometimes the paper actually tears before the stamp does. So I tend to use a metal ruler or something with a, an edge just to come through and tear. The corners come off. I don't mind the corner coming off. I have postage stamps in my box that have corners torn off them. That to me is just, it makes them a little bit of antique looking, but. There you go. So that means that all of my stamps are now ready to go. What I will say, however, is if we look at this version, where's the rectangular one? Come on, this version next to this version, you can see already that this is my favourite because it's a more realistic edge. Although, because I've got two of those, I can mass make those. I, I probably will in the future buy another one of these because I really like this set and probably stop using this because this one also takes some time to clean out. Right, that can go to one side. Now, obviously we're going to take images and put them into here, which I'm going to do with you. However, let's discuss where I could find those images from. So one of my favourite places is these type of books. The Observer book, this is of wildflowers, and you can see immediately why I like this book. It's got little images in that are absolutely perfect. And don't forget, even things like black and white, a postage stamp can be made of absolutely anything from a map part to, to whatever you wish it to be. So these these are books are great. There's um, there's many of them. There's ones on butterflies. There's ones on bugs. There's ones on trees, um, eggs, fish. That there's a lot of these. So if you ever find these in a in a thrift or a charity store, pick them up. They're really really useful. Next to those are things like this out of a magazine. Now you may go, well, why have we got two guys? You look at postage stamps. There's, there's guys and girls and children and everything on them. So if I came in here, let's just do that. Where's my little trimmer? Right, let's see if I can make this about the right size. Sorry guys, you just lost your feet. That looks too big. You can, of course, do these measurements and then remember what they are. I'm thinking about it. I think it's an inch and a quarter it needs to be. There you go. So that could go on there. I think I'll take a little bit more off you. Um, a lot of the time I just do this with by eye, by scissors. Because, as you can see, it gets under the guard because it's so small. So right, we will make up one of these. So I'll put that to one side. So um, this little trimmer, by the way, that's the brand. Got it on the internet. Um, I want to say Amazon or eBay. Anything I use is usually from Amazon or eBay, unless I'm at a show. Now, these here are some of the images from, that's not from that, so like lie to the public. Um, these images here are from one of those books that you saw. Actually, those aren't. So I'm trying, I've, I've mixed stuff up. Bad demonstrator. Let's put that to one side. Right. So um, these are from one of those observer books. And I don't get particularly precious about cutting pieces off. So let's put these by and just do one of these. So I want to say it's about. Which one should I do? Should I do a smaller one? Or do the bigger one? I want to say it's about an inch and three quarters, or just a hair under, is about the right height for one of these. There you go. And then I will say it's about an inch and a quarter for 
the width. So cut accordingly to what you think is best for you. Um, as I said, I very often will do this with the scissors because I find it's much more accurate with the scissors. But there you go. So I can go ahead and that will be another one that we'll do. Right. Um, other things, you know, you can find reference books um, like table books and books like on botanicals and stuff like that. And you find stuff like this that have got lots of different stuff on them. I will very often use those and even keep the word in if I can. There's also these sort of things which are pages and you'll find they've got numbers in them. Never worry about the numbers. Postage stamps have numbers on them. It's the price. Not all postage stamps have numbers on, but postage stamps can have numbers on. So let's just trim this one down a little bit as well. That's coming from this side. An inch and a quarter. Now, I wouldn't normally leave all of the numbers on there. So I'm going to just see what one and three quarter inches does. It'll leave the number at the bottom. So if I leave that number there, and I come in this way, inch and three quarters, or just a little bit underneath. It's left at the top, but that's good because I will show you what to do if you have that as something you need to cover up. Yep, that can be another stamp. So I want a little bit more off that. That just feels it's just a hair too wide. Now, you could obviously come in and make some stamped backgrounds. You could do this with words. You can do anything like that. Right, another one that I would say to do is look at your digitals or your ephemera packs. OK, these two things came from a Tracy Fox um, decorated Halloween matchbox kit. So they're the perfect size. These came as part of a Tracy Fox um, digital. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but they were all full of mushrooms and they're pretty much exactly the right size. So I'm just going to trim that little one down a bit. So we'll make that. I like making mushroom stamps. And I would imagine this one's going to be the same. Where's the little one? That one actually looks about the right size to me. So I'll leave those later because if you see me do two of them, you don't need to see me do all of them. Um, things like this. Now, if you've got one of these... And you do want to make a longer stamp, I would say take the piece and actually just go around, stick it on a piece of paper and cut around it. So let me just grab a sheet of paper. So I'm just going to take the word, I'll put that bat. There's the bat. So I'm going to put these together because I'm going to show you what I would do with these. Uh, again, I could cut this down and make it into a stamp. Another place to find them is if you go into magazines, some magazines like this is traveler advertising this is vanity fair at the back you will find lots of these images and they're almost like an index of everything that is in the, in the magazine itself like that would make a perfect stamp do you know actually let's see if we can do that let's get that lady out of there so i know i'm off shot here but we'll be back in a second right so as i said um, things like this and like these are all art pieces that even would make a great stamp so let's just come in and trim this young lady up all right I need to take the bottom edge off I've got a feeling that I want to make this smaller than that I'm just going to do this by hand. This, this trimmer is fabulous for the big stuff, but when it's the little stuff, I struggle. Right, I'm not sure which one this is going to go on. Right, so if I cut down the side of that number there, then that young lady should fit in there. So there you go. So it's almost like a bridal stamp. OK, we, we've seen how I've done that. I've given myself enough selection now to actually just get on with the rest of the process because this is not meant to be a lifelong video. So even stuff like this, look, that one there, that's really pretty. I would use that on the stamp as well. 
So let's move those out of the way. So the next step for me is, and I do work mass make style because that's who I am and that's what I do. I like to take a bit of um, distress ink around the edges just because sometimes the image is quite pale and then you've got the background pale as well. So just by giving a little bit of an edge to it, it will show up because if you look, that stamp there is the same colour almost as the background or the border. Um, another thing you can do too is once you know your dimensions of your stamp, like I said, that's an inch and three quarters by an inch and a quarter. That one I've never measured. I just, I just do it basically. You can actually start working your way through books or magazines looking for that size image. You can also do this with things like um, numbers, words, phrases, anything, absolutely anything. I mean, if, if you look through, if you just Google postage stamp and see what comes up, you will see there are so many different images used on postage stamps. I'm just going to glue these down and then we'll get to the finishing off stage. Now, I think I've already said I will put the other video in the description box below and then I'll put the link for this video in that one. So already I'm getting close to a postage stamp. Um, I do like doing these, I must admit. I, it's one of those things, if I'm having one of those days where I'm just not in the mood to do something, I'll just I'll just sit down and make a whole load of these stamps because there's always spare paper around. There's always things I can use to do them with. And I find postage stamps useful. They're great for making um, a focal point on a cluster. They're just, they're just great. Right, this one I need to remember to put to one side. Just because that's going to be dealt with in a different way. Um, I was asked, where do I get my postage stamps from, the genuine ones? I can probably say almost definitely all my postage stamps come from eBay auctions. I usually put in postage stamp or postal stamp and I put in job lot and you'll find people will sell them by the bag or sell them in weight. Um, I've also found sometimes when you go to a marketplace, You'll find if there's a stall there just selling bric-a-brac and stuff like that, sometimes they have old photo albums or they will actually have um, uh, bags or boxes of postage stamps as well. Right, let's leave those sit and think about themselves for a while. Let's do, do something about this. Right, I could come in with my scissors now and cut those edges if you've got one of these. If you haven't got one of those... But you've got one of these. Let's see. Take that out of the hand. Remember to keep this piece of paper. I'm going to throw that in the bin. I like this sort of paper. Let's just get rid of these dots into the trash as well. There you go. So what I would do is I'm going to put this on the plate. Now this isn't 100 percent perfect. Okay, we're just saying this is an option. Then I take my stamp outer and I will lay it across it as close as I can try and get at least three edges sometimes I will do it so I cut those two sides and then I'll come back and cut the other two sides but luckily enough this is just going to work here you can see through the dots so you can line it up fractionally so you're going to come in pop that down roll it through roll it back again And that will give me that effect on the sides. I don't mind this because those are going to get cut in a minute anyway. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to work the other way. Now, if you're doing this way, it's a little trickier 
because obviously you've got to line stuff up again. But if you try and line it up these holes here, that's the best way to line up the stamp underneath it. As I said, this is a bit hit and miss, but it gives you an option if you need it. So, oh, come on out, yeah. Let's pop you out. Let's take that on side. Let's get rid of this. So again, where's that little ruler gone? Let's just use this one instead. So I've made something that looks like a stamp. I mean, that that's just an option. As I said, if you do have one of these Fiskars, you can come in and you could do the same thing and cut the edges with this. The trouble is, as I said, trying to find one of these scissors is usually the problem. I also find with thinner paper, it doesn't always cut perfectly. Right. So that's definitely not going into my stash, but I want you to see that there is an option if you wanted to wanted to do that. Or you could try and cut smaller sizes. That needs to be over there. So right, next stage now, let's lay these out so I can lay them on something. Like, okay, for instance, that polar bear would make a great stamp. So guess what? He's coming off there and he's going to become a stamp in the future. Right, I think I can lay these all on here. I tend to lay them all out when I do stamping because I can just get on with it then. I don't have to pick up an individual stamp to work on. And then my next step is, where are they? I stamp. I've got a small stamp block. I use black archival because I know that they're going to be stuck down to something. Now, I have little postal stamps and franking stamps and those little wavy line things. I, I couldn't tell you which set they came off. They just came off several sets. You will find them all over the place. When you, when you look at um, clear stamps or rubber stamps, you'll find them. So I literally come in and I will come in and stamp each of them. Now, where this number is, if I stamp there, you no longer know the number is there. You're going to have a stamp there, stamp there, stamp there. Stamp off the excess. And then put the franking lines in as well. So I tend to go opposite to where the circular piece is. And also don't get held up thinking the, the stamping lines need to be straight. If you've ever looked at a real stamp, I can tell you, You'll be lucky if they're straight ever. Um, I don't mind the number down there. There you go. Um, stamp that off. Right. One thing you may have noticed, and I don't always do this, but I'm going to show you it to you anyway. Some of the stamps I've made, I've stamped a number into. Oh, there's one. Is there another one with it in? Okay. I used to do this all the time. I used to stamp a number into them so it looked like the price of the stamp. Although it was really, really fiddly to do. I had to find the tiniest little number. And this is the tiniest little number. And in the end, I lost the will to live. I'm like, I'm not, I've kept it just in case, but I don't, I don't use that. And where did I get that from? This was a cheap bullet journal clear stamp. And as you can see, this here, number 31, I cut it off the bottom. So that's where I found my tiniest number because I didn't have any stamps or actually in scale with what, what I was doing. So, so that's basically how, how I make my postage stamps. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a quick flick through of the ones I've got in my hand, just so we can see. So these hopefully will be able to be seen on the screen because they are quite small. And if I see anything I've not mentioned, then at least you will you'll know what they are. So see, even that really plain one on the correct stamp, that little bit of green may be just what that needs. That's that lady from the back of the magazine. Now, you could also come through and use washi tape and take sections of washi tape and turn them into them. This was from a fishing book. 
again, these are the ones from that wa uh, wildflower book. There you go. There's one where I've only just used the black outline. Now, you could, with some of these, like this one, I think, there was more than one stem, so I got more than one stamp off them. Right, these are the ones that are from the Tracy Fox um, decorated matchbox for Halloween. And as you can see, I've just cut, cut them up and fitted them in where I could. Now, granted, not all images are going to be the right size. However, if you hunt through and you look like this fish here, the fish was too big. But having just that much on there, that was another bit that could just be anything. It just makes for an interesting pop of something. I do work my way through different things like butterflies, birds, flowers, bees. I, I've done blueprints. I've done umpteen different things. So there's a bat one. Again, there's there's a black and white one. Mushrooms. Like, OK, this was a piece that I could only get that much of the dragonfly out of. But you know what? He looks fine. Oh, this. Here's another version. OK, this was part of a map. This was the key on the map to tell you what elevations it was. But, you know, makes a stamp. So just have a look at what you've got. As I said, you might have them. Oh, there you go. There's another dragonfly. Partial. Can be either way it wants to be. Um, just have a look at what you've got and see what you can do. As I said, the Fiskars scissors, if you can find them, they're OK. I would rather just stay with the dies. You can use pinking shears, the ones with the little zigzag edges for sewing as well. Depends on you. Depends on how realistic you want to be. I do seem to remember someone said um, they found a pair of dog grooming shears for thinning. And if they cut it with that, it made a row of perforations that they could tear. I've never seen it done. Just know that it's out there. So, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, it was just a little one from me. Just to play, play it the other way, just so everyone saw all of the options. So, I'm Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, goodbye now.